Light that spark fire nation. JLD here with an audio masterclass on the upside of adversity. And to drop these value bombs, I have brought Brian Smith. He is the founder of UGG. That's U-G-G and him, pretty sure Fire Nation. If you're not currently wearing Uggs, you wish that you were. So anyways, we're going to talk about the whole Brian Smith story. It's quite a fascinating one, quite an exciting one. He's quite the dude. So make sure you stick around because we're going to dive into all this greatness as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors. When it comes to hiring, you can save time and get more qualified candidates fast with ZipRecruiter. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Thinkific is the best platform to create, market, and sell your online courses. And we speak from three years of personal experience. Right now, you can sign up for one month free on the Thinkific Pro Plan, plus leverage over $1,000 worth of training bonuses. Just visit thinkific.com slash fire. Thinkific.com slash fire. Brian, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. Okay. Well, hi, Fire Nation. Good to be back again. It's been a few years. Yeah. One thing about you you don't know about me. I'm taking my seven-year-old grandson to his first rugby practice today. (laughs) And uh, I played rugby against England and against the New Zealand All Blacks in my prime. And uh, then I coached San Diego State rugby team when I first got to America 40 years ago. And all the kids that I coached have now grown up, had kids, and they started this incredible rugby league in North County, San Diego. And it's you know overtaken soccer. And uh, it's cool to have my grandson as the third generation of uh, you know, kids getting on the field and enjoying themselves. That is super cool for obvious reasons. Now, I do have what could be a pretty sensitive question, but did you ever beat the All Blacks? No. <laughs> we, had a, we had a moral victory. The, they were playing on a tour across Australia. They beat the state of Tasmania 116 to nothing, and then they beat the state of South Australia 124 to nothing. And we were next, and we, we held them 33-3. to three, so, You scored! I mean, we lost, and I kicked a field goal. So oh. that, that was about, you know, it was almost like a victory for us. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, Fire Nation, as I shared in the intro, we have a lot of great things to talk about with Brian. He's obviously the founder of UGG, and he's got quite a backstory, which he told earlier on Fire Nation, on Entrepreneurs on Fire, on an episode long, long time ago. And we're going to be bringing some new sides, some new questions, some new fire to this episode. And I can't wait to dive on him. Cool. Let's go. So Brian, your backstory, your background is fascinating. So why don't you give Fire Nation, those of us that don't know the full background, the full backstory, your backstory of UGG. I was an accountant in Perth 40 years ago and uh, took 10 years to graduate and I quit the same day as I graduated. I hated it. And I always had a feeling in me that I wanted to do my own business. And after a lot of meditation, I I realized that all the big trends were coming out of California, like Levi jeans and waterbeds and all the skate brands and surf brands and everything. And I thought, I'm going to go to California and find the next big one and bring it back. Uh, So I did. I arrived in in Santa Monica um, within a couple of weeks uh, in Los Angeles and and I brought my surfboard and my suitcase and I went straight to Malibu and started surfing because it had always been a big dream of mine. And after a couple of months up there, I still hadn't found the next big thing, uh, but I'd made a ton of friends in the surf market. Um, And then it was about – Late October, early November, I was surfing and the the water was getting really chilly and the wind was cold. And I remember getting out of the surf and putting on my sheepskin boots that I'd brought from Australia with me. And I, and I just had this flash and thought, oh, my God, there are no sheepskin boots in America. And one in two Australians had some sort of sheepskin footwear. So 
I uh, looked at my buddy Doug and said, man, we've got to go into business. We're going to be instant millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what that's like, you know, every every entrepreneur gets bitten with this dream or this flash of insight on a new product or service and they think it's going to be, oh, instant. And unfortunately, that's not really how it happens. Um, we ended up finding a manufacturer in Australia and ordered six pairs of samples and we went around to all the shoe stores and got shut out completely like 150 stores Oof. not interested though they just said we were crazy bringing sheepskin into california but but california's climate's identical to australia so that wasn't the reason um and it made you know as an entrepreneur you have to learn to pivot when you when you sort of hit a wall and we started asking like, well how come all my friends up at malibu think this is the best idea in the world and it struck me well a lot of them went down to Australia on their surf trips and bought four or five pairs of boots back for their buddies. So within the surf community, it was pretty well known. So as another pivot, we uh, decided to go call on the surf shops. And everyone we went to uh, just says, oh, my God, those things are great. You're going to make a fortune if you import those. And so we were so buoyed up. We, we raised about 20 grand, which in today's money is about 70000 and we bought 500 pairs uh, to handle all this demand we had from the surf shops. And uh, when the product arrived just before Christmas, we, we did our you know, big delivery run for the, for the year or the order taking run and, and we went back to the same stores and, and all I can remember getting was, oh my God, Brian, well done, you're gonna make a fortune. <laughs> but we couldn't sell them in our store, we just sell surfboards and trunks and booties and and you know they're way too expensive but you'll do great in the shoe stores and so the the net result of that after you know two or three weeks of trying to push them out, out on the road was by christmas we sold 28 pairs which was wow. horribly horribly disappointing but um the the point that i got out of that uh, ended up being the theme of the book that i wrote the book's called the birth of a brand and uh, the theme of the book is that you can't give birth to adults. Uh, after all of the different businesses that I've started, um, they all follow the same pattern. As you conceive the idea and you take the first action, which is birth, like the birth of Ugg was buying six pairs of samples. And then it just lies there and it lies there and there's no amount of feeding or yelling or jiggling the cradle. An infant can't get up and go to college. It has to be an infant. And eventually, if you nurture it enough, it'll keep it'll start toddling, and that's cool because you know first people are buying your product, and magazines are writing articles about you, and and that quickly goes then into the youth phase, which is a great phase. You know, it's just like the kids can put on their clothes and brush their teeth without you. Now you've got orders happening and sales, that, you know, coming in, and the production's good, and the accounting and shipping is great, and you know, you can run a twenty, thirty million dollar company in that that phase of youth. But if it's a really, really great product or service, you're gonna hit the teenage years eventually. And just like you wanted to be in every party in town as a teenager, you have this tendency to want to be in every big mass retailer and every Real. big show. And it's so easy to outstrip your capital and go crash and burn. And I have seen a lot of companies do that. And I almost lost control of Ugg several times during that period. So eventually, though, it becomes a mature company and, uh, you know, things are sort of predictable. But Brian, as entrepreneurs, we're like always being told to prove our concept before we proceed. We're always told to make sure there's an actual real need for our idea, that our idea is a solution to an actual pain point. But you didn't have that. I mean, how were you able to build a market for a product when there wasn't this perceived need, where people weren't waking up in the morning and saying, oh, I wish I had these, these Ugg boots? What, what did you do to accomplish that? It was even worse than that. It was like those things are so ugly and <laughs> sweaty and prickly and you can't get them wet and, and, you know, we have mud and slush where we are, you know. But it, it was the ignorance of uh, the American public. The Americans don't understand sheepskin like Australians because Australians know that you can't rip it. You can get it wet and it keeps you warm even though it's wet. 
Um, you know, you can wash it. You know, all these things that, that are normal to Australians. So I didn't understand how little Americans or how much resistance I would get. Uh, and it was purely because I knew how popular they were in Australia that kept me going. Had I not had that background, I would have given up probably in the first year or two. But uh, the perseverance is in, in amazing. And, and the other thing is, so many entrepreneurs wait till, till, oh, I haven't got it perfect yet, you know? And that's a huge disaster for any entrepreneur. The, one of my themes in the book is that you, you have to have a certain amount of ignorance to be a good entrepreneur because if you knew all the obstacles that were out ahead of you, you would never in a million years start a business. But it's the ignorance of, and the, and the passion of, of the, the dream of making something happen, that's what makes entrepreneurs so fantastic and, uh, and gets these businesses eventually off the ground. But, but, you know, so many people I see that, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, but I haven't got this fixed yet. I haven't got that sourced yet. I haven't done you – know, there's always a million reasons why they haven't started. But if you saw the first pair of Ugg boots that came in, the samples, they were so horrible – you know, I should never have been able to put them into retail, but that's all we had. So we started. And so anyway, the, the message I'm trying to make to you and the listeners is if you have an idea, get started. Don't wait for it to be perfect. Now, you did eventually and successfully get into mainstream stores. So maybe tell us quickly, like, what is the story behind actually what was the the domino that toppled to make that happen? But then also the takeaways for us entrepreneurs, you know, with our products, with our services, with our concepts and ideas. Sure, sure. It's quite profound. And it took me three or four years to figure out. So the first year sales were like 5,000. The next year I decided to advertise. So I got these really, you know, cute models and put them on the beach at Wind and Sea and used those with the ads, you know, with the, with the boots showing, you know, m major portion of the ad. And the sales went to 10,000. And I did the tried better looking models the next year and it sales went to 20,000. And I knew something was wrong. And it wasn't until I was having a beer with one of my customers uh, one Friday night and, and I was explaining this dilemma that I, I couldn't get any traction and he just said, oh, shut up, Brian. And he calls out to these little 12, 13-year-old grommets in the back of the surf shop and he says, hey, you guys, what do you think of Uggs? And every one of them came out and said, oh, those Uggs, man, they're so fake. <laughs> have, you, have you seen those ads? Those models, they can't surf. And instantly I knew what they were talking about. I looked at those ads with a new 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 light and, and thought, oh my God, they're so fake. They're so posed. So in again pivoting, I uh, called a buddy of mine who was running a scholastic surf association and I said, Pete, do you have any young kids who are going to turn pro soon? And he, he gave me a couple of guys and I instead of hiring a big photographer and doing a pose shoot, I just went surfing with them and took photos on the way to Black's Beach and Trestles. And these are two you know, iconic surf walks. They're about a mile long and fantastic surf at the end. And I just ran photos of, of them in September, October, November, December, and the sales went to over $200,000. Dang. And the reason was that I, I struck a chord with every little kid who reads Surfer Magazine would die to be walking down those roads with Mike Parsons and Ted Robinson, you know, the young pros. And – it, that was the day I sort of understood and became an absolute, you know, uh, student of marketing and advertising. And the rule, the takeaway here is you don't ever advertise your products like I was, you know, the first ads was all about the boots. The ads that worked, you could hardly see the boots. They were so small in the photos. But the image was such that every little kid would die mm. to be in, in that photograph. So extrapolating there, if you have a, a software product that saves time, for instance, you don't put a photograph of your software out there on the, in, the, in your ads. You have a photo of some guy in, in the Caribbean drinking a rum drink um, with all the time he's saving from your product. So you have to capture the image of what you want your target market to feel. And the, and the, the more you can get emotion into the – visuals or you know the you know, video if you do that the more you can get this emotion for people to want to be in there the more successful you will be 
And Fire Nation, I think a great example of this is the Dos Equis commercial, The World's Most Interesting Man. I mean, yeah. that whole commercial, that whole thing, it was not about the beer Dos Equis per se. Like, it was there, but I mean, it was all about the most interesting man in the world, being in the most interesting places in the world with the women and the locations and this and the that. We're like, we want to be there with him. And oh, yeah, he's holding a Dos Equis, So obviously that's part of what it means to be with him. And that was just kind of into the subconscious. And then, of course, that became a really successful campaign. So go ahead, Brian. No, that, you hit it on the head. That's, the, the more emotion you can get into an ad, the uh, more successful it will be. And Fire Nation, if you think Brian is done dropping value bombs, you have another thing coming. And we'll be back as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors. Want more freedom in your career so you can spend more time doing the work you love? We speak from personal experience when we say that teaching online is an incredible way to help get you there, and we do it all on Thinkific. Thinkific is the best platform to create, market, and sell your online courses. In fact, it has helped us welcome over a 1,000 new members to Podcasters Paradise, plus deliver the best user experience to our existing members, and that's only the beginning of what's possible with Thinkific, whether you've got a book, blog, a podcast, or are running workshops, an online course can help you grow your reach, generate game-changing revenue, and share your expertise at scale. We've looked at a ton of other options for creating online courses, and we chose Thinkific because it's easy to use and they have the best support team. And right now, you can sign up for one month free on Thinkific's most popular plan, Thinkific Pro plus leverage over $1,000 worth of training bonuses. Visit thinkific.com slash fire and start building your online courses today. That's thinkific, T-H-I-N-K-I-F-I-C dot com slash fire. Your company is only as good as the people you hire, and finding qualified candidates isn't easy. Luckily, we have tools that can help, like ZipRecruiter. I want to share a case study that's a perfect example of this. Meet Jermaine, the Director of Talent Acquisition at Hurricane Grill and Wings, a casual dining restaurant with 70 locations across the U.S. Jermaine needed a consistent flow of candidates to grow their franchises, but he was having a tough time. Other job sites didn't deliver the quality or volume of candidates he needed. Also, using multiple job sites led to a complex hiring process. ZipRecruiter's all-in-one solution provided Jermaine with a sustainable flow of candidates with the required experience, and he was able to fully staff new franchises within three weeks. Jermaine says, with ZipRecruiter, we found the hiring success we've been looking for. And Jermaine isn't alone. In fact, four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ziprecruiter.com slash fire. Once again, ziprecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. So Brian, we're back and let's be honest. Uggs, they are a seasonal product for that market that you were targeting at the time. And that could be risky for businesses for obvious reasons. So how did you survive the lean times with this seasonal product? Yeah, th- that's a really astute observation. Um, Two issues. One, I had to get summer jobs. You know, the first year was scraping boats at Marina del Rey. The second year was construction in Bel Air. The third year I was working as a greenskeeper on a golf course. So, I mean, I did anything I could to stay alive. And uh, the biggest problem from the seasonality was financing because there was nothing happening for nine months, and then there's this huge rush of deliveries in October, November, December, and then it sort of dwindled down again. And so when I was going to banks trying to find money to finance the production, they they would, you know, for the first five years at least, they go, oh, Brian, this is a fad. It'll be dead next year. It won't be around. And I couldn't convince them that this was a long-term play. And the other thing was that they saw, you know, flat line for nine months and then this huge spike in cash need and a cash, you know, income. And that scared the heck out of them. So, you know, going back, if, if I had one thing to change in, in that whole 20 year period that I owned the Ugg brand, it would have been to get somebody who understood finance and who understood how to project cash flows. Now, 
Today, that's relatively easy because there's all these business programs out there, you know, business plan programs, and they all have a component for an Excel spreadsheet for forecasting. But back when I was doing it, it was all on handwritten and Greenbow, and you had to add every column with a calculator. And it, was, <laughs> it, took, it took months to do a forecast, you know. So there should be no excuse today for, for getting somebody in who understands how to project what your sales are going to be, what your costs are going to be, all the incidental expenses, and you can pretty much figure out where you're going to need the money just by looking at the cash flow line. And I would strongly recommend anyone who's starting a business or who has, hasn't implemented that in their current business, absolutely get somebody in who understands financing because the bigger you grow, the worse the problem gets. For years I thought, like I remember when I did a million in sales and I was broke, I thought, okay, the answer is to sell two million next year. Well, I did sell two million next year. I was twice as broke. Oh. I had more debt because growth can kill you if you don't have the right financing in place. And I, I that it, if anyone reads my book, um, that's going to be the recurring theme from from you know starting out with twenty eight pairs all the way up to twenty million dollars. You know, it, it never got easier. It always got more difficult the, the bigger the company became. A critical part of your business, Fire Nation understand finance in the cash flow side of your business. If you don't have that part under control, if you don't have somebody with their finger on the pulse of that, your business is in trouble. And I love how you shared that, Brian. The growth can kill your business if you are not prepared. I mean, I'll tell you, it has happened on this podcast. We call it the hug of death. Sometimes companies come on, we talk about their product and their service, and they're in the growth stage, and then this podcast sends all the traffic to that product, to that service, and that company's not ready for it, and that growth is like a hug of death, and it literally can drive them underwater, and I hate seeing that, so that's why I always try to prepare people. It's like, listen, if you come on and if you really resonate with my audience and they come at you in droves, can you handle this? Like, are you truly an entrepreneur on fire? Is your business rock and rolling? Because I don't want to be the reason that you get this hug of death if you can't handle it. So realize that we all want bigger numbers. We all want growth, but at what cost? You have to do it the right way. And Brian, we touched on this earlier, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into this is that so many people do seem to just be afraid to start because they don't know exactly how to start. Now, there wasn't really a roadmap for you to follow when you started. So what the heck kept you going? And what would you recommend to those listeners who are potentially going down the same path? Sure. Let me try and explain it this way. So many people are waiting for all the conditions to be just perfect. You know, the perfect development of the product or service, the perfect advertising campaign. It, it doesn't work that way. It, it, there's a saying that's thousands and thousands of years old that is once you start out on a path, the universe will conspire to work with you. And how I explain that is that the universe, the world we live in, has everything that you could possibly ever dream of or want it already exists somewhere right and john when's the last time you saw an advertisement for a refrigerator been a little while but if you needed one this saturday you would start seeing evidence of refrigerators everywhere that's you'd a be good point on the street looking in in windows and be refrigerators you'd be at starbucks and the classified newspaper is open and there's ads of refrigerators all over it. You, you'll be flicking through TV channels or whatever and you'll see it. It, it. They've always been there. They've never gone away, but you never saw them because your focus wasn't on refrigerators. But the minute you start to focus in on a refrigerator, it's everywhere. Now, extrapolate that into starting a business. Yo, I've never seen it done before. I don't know what to do. You know, um, this is scary. But the minute you start out and take the first action, something will happen that will come into your awareness to go, oh, my God, that fits with what I'm doing. And the next day I'll be, oh, my God, look at this magazine. I could use that in my business. And then suddenly all this information that's always been there begins to focus itself into your vision and your direction. So the bottom line is get started. You, you'll never get this information if you're sitting on a couch waiting and wishing. 
the whole universe conspiring around us, Fire Nation, is so true. And the one that always hits me on the head, Brian, is when we go out and we buy this new car and we're like, oh my God, like I'm a, I have this new car that nobody else has because I never see this car around. And then literally you see this car at every single stoplight you're at because you just never saw the car before. It was always there, but it wasn't like in your universe. But now that you own that car, you see it every single place you go because now it's in your universe. So Fire Nation, get going. Make your universe conspire for you, not against you. There's no identical roadmap that we can follow. Brian didn't have a roadmap. I didn't have a roadmap. We just took that next step. And in fact, I love that Martin Luther King quote. You don't have to see the whole staircase to take the next step. You just take the next step and then the following step will be revealed for you. And Brian, you wrote the book, The Birth of a Brand. Tell us why you wrote this book and who is it for? Well, it's a roadmap for entrepreneurs. Don't ask me why, but even in the early days of ARG, I, I would have some article or some advertisement that I did or something would happen in the business. I'd say, well, that'd be great in a book one day. And I, I've had this little three ring binder about an inch deep, you know, and uh, I would just throw these, didn't even punch holes. I just threw them in this binder. And after 20 years, this binder was like a, a three inch thick ring binder. And, um, then, you know, I sold the company and got invested in a bunch of other companies, but when the recession hit, things slowed down and I thought, you know, I'm going to, find that file and I'm going to write a book about this. And, and so I had records of every meaningful thing that had happened from the time I started to the you know, 18 or 19 years that I owned the company. And it turned out to be, I, I wrote it chronologically. So it's, it's really the story of me having that aha moment at Malibu and importing the first boots all the way through to the sale of the company. And it's got, you know, lots of, little successful things in there but by far the most important part is all the disasters that I created <laughs> and, I, and I swear it was it was just because the product was so damn good that it, it sort of hung in there while I made all these horrible decisions around it but still survived because every time I made a, a blunder or something didn't happen the way I thought it would I stuck in there and I adjusted and the one of the big like uh, there's a lot of philosophy and spirituality in the book uh, which I've developed over the years and one of the greatest statements in the book is that nearly always your most disappointing disappointments will become your greatest blessings Oof. and it's uh, when I talk from the stage which is what I love to do most I always ask you know how many of you had something happen in the last 12 months that at the time you thought was the greatest disaster and now you look back and think, thank God that happened because what <laughs> you're doing now is so much better. And I swear, two-thirds to three-quarters of the audience put their hand up every single time. Wow. wow. So it's an infallible piece of philosophy. Where would you like Fire Nation to find out more about this book? You can find it on Amazon. It's called The Birth of a Brand. And I did the audio just like a few months ago. So... It's like a brand new thing on Amazon, and I, I read the whole thing. And it's funny, I, in four years, uh, I always thought, well, if I ever do the audio, I'm going to update it and I'm going to, you know, you know, just completely revamp the thing. I ended up not changing a single word. I, I was staggered that the information in there is so timeless. Wow. And, you know, Sure, we got social media and we've got electronics and instant clicks and 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 everything now. But the principles of marketing and advertising and selling and business building, the principles haven't changed one bit. It's just that the methodology we use now is so much faster and quicker, and you know you, you have so much more information at your fingertips. But the book itself is pretty much timeless as far as the, you know how what it takes to build a business and the emotional uh, strength that you have to have to hang in there. Fire Nation, we're going to end with this. 
success leaves clues and you are hearing the voice right now of a top 1% of the top 1% of all entrepreneurs who have walked on this earth. So you need to make sure that you are listening because success leaves clues. And our guest today, Brian, has had massive, massive success. So go check out The Birth of a Brand. You love audio, Fire Nation. So check out the audio book because you're going to hear Brian's actual voice as he reads this book, as he breaks down his knowledge on this. So definitely check that out because you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with Brian and JLD today, so keep up the heat. And as always, head over to eofire.com, type Brian in the search bar so all the links for the show notes will come up in that show notes page. And of course, you can go back and hear the episode Brian and I did a few years back because a lot has changed since then and we dropped some heat back then as well. So Brian, thank you for sharing your knowledge with my audience today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, John. Go Fire Nation. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Brian and Fire Nation. I know that you understand how podcasts can ignite your business, but let's be honest, the planning, the creating, the collaborating with guests, the producing and distributing, it takes time. It takes time and it can be intense. That's why I am fired up for you to check out Oxbus. Oxbus has an end-to-end podcast creation platform for entrepreneurs just like you. Visit oxbus.com slash JLD today. That's A-U-X-B-U-S dot com slash JLD. Oxbus.com slash JLD to try for free. I'll catch you there, Fire Nation, or I'll catch you on the flip side. Thinkific is the best platform to create, market, and sell your online courses. And we speak from three years of personal experience. Right now, you can sign up for one month free on the Thinkific Pro Plan, plus leverage over $1,000 worth of training bonuses. Just visit thinkific.com slash fire. Thinkific.com slash fire. Successful entrepreneurs take advantage of tools that do things more efficiently. And when it comes to hiring, the tool to use is ZipRecruiter. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. 